These are today's starting lineups for your San Diego Padres. Leading off, our Stanford genius, Jody Garrett. Batting second, my older, not younger, but younger looking brother, Edgar Gonzalez. Hitting third, Brian Giles. Brian, you gotta grow up. Hitting fourth, my younger brother, Adrian Gonzalez. I liked him better before he was an all-star, by the way. Batting fifth, Kevin. It's so easy, even a caveman can do it, Kuzminov. Batting sixth, Chase La Cabeza Headley. Hitting seventh, our shortstop, our loud and obnoxious shortstop, Khalil Green. Batting eighth, our pigeon toed catcher, Nick Hundley. And hitting ninth, hopefully we'll get some runs for you today, Randy Wolf. Hi, this is Jack Clark, the Ripper from St. Louis. Today's starting lineup for the Cardinals is Skip Schumacher playing left field, Ryan Ludwig, the All Star, playing right field, playing, batting second. Albert Pujols, perennial all-star, playing first base. Troy Gloss today playing third. Uh, been an all-star, is hot right now. Batted by Rick, followed by Rick Ankiel, who has been one of the hottest hitters since before the all-star break and picked it right up again and had a big home run and a big hit last night and good battle against a left-handed pitcher, one of my favorites. Yadier Molina behind the plate, who every day going out there is uh, going to give you a great game. You cannot strike this guy out. He had a big hit last night. Cesar Asturias playing shortstop, one of the top shortstops in the game, always has been. Gold Glove winner. Todd Wellemeyer batting eighth in Tony LaRusso's lineup. And Brendan Ryan playing second, who always gives you 110% and is fun to watch. And that's the Cardinal team today on Saturday for 2008. The Ripper, Jack Clark, and we thank Edgar and Adrian Gonzalez. Starting lineups for both teams brought to you by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. The Ripper, a Padre and a Cardinal during his playing days. And it didn't matter what uniform he wore, nobody scared third baseman more than Jack the Ripper Clark. Every one of them played back on the outfield grass when he was up. Well, there are a couple of hitters on the field like that that uh, can claim the same thing this afternoon. And when you talk about the all-time series between the Padres and Cardinals, it's been a rather lopsided affair in the regular season, and, and it, it gets even worse for San Diego fans in the postseason. St. Louis has had a decided advantage over San Diego, whether it's uh, during June, September, or October. In fact, these two teams have met in three postseason series. 1996, 2005, and 2006, and San Diego has won only one of those games covering three postseason series. Yeah, they've been thoroughly dominated by the St. Louis Cardinals. You see, out pitched, out hit, out everything. St. Louis, I don't know, they just seem to play their best baseball when the postseason comes. Tony LaRusa, Tony LaRusa does a great job of preparing these guys using this long marathon of 162 games. And boy, these guys are always poised. For the stretch run. Right hander Todd Wellemeyer on the mound to make his 19th start of the year here this afternoon. And as good as Wellemeyer was to begin the season, he was the National League's pitcher of the month in May. He has really struggled over his last five. Well, you see, he is a hard thrower. He's got a very good changeup. That's his out pitch, Matty. Elbow there. Well, he missed a start three weeks ago with a with a bad elbow. And since then. Well, he hasn't been near as effective as he was before he missed that start. And then Pac-Man. Tony LaRusso had to use five relievers last night. So he would like uh, Wellemeyer to be a little Pac-Man, maybe eat up some innings for him today. Going to be a tough task on a hot day. The requisite St. Louis midsummer humidity kicking. And uh, what would be better on an afternoon like this than to reach for the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment? Budweiser, the great American lager. Ready for baseball here at Bush Stadium. Todd Wellemeyer underway. His first pitch to Jody Garrett is fouled back. It's Garrett, Gonzalez, and Giles to start things for Buddy Black and the Padres this afternoon. As we mentioned, St. Louis has taken the first two games in this four game series. The final regular season series between these two clubs this year. And Garrett's aboard on a leadoff base hit. This ball runs in on Jody Garrett. He breaks his bat. But he'll happily trot to first base with a broken bat after getting that base hit. So with the leadoff hitter aboard, now it's Edgar Gonzalez who is kind enough to help us out with starting lineups this afternoon along with uh, kid brother Adrian. Edgar, the lesser known of the big league Gonzalez brothers. 
is off to a great start in his major league career. He ranks first among National League rookies in batting average hitting 306 to start play here this afternoon. And in fact the Gonzalez brothers the fourth set of brothers to be Padres at the same time Marcus and Brian Giles last year Tony and Chris Quinn. I don't know if I'd be able to do that because I just remember my big brother when we played on the same team in wiffle ball or something. He always beat me up. <laughs> it, the, the Gonzalez brothers' relationship not not quite not that lopsided. Yeah, they, they get along pretty good. A ball and a strike to count to Edgar with a man aboard. Back to Todd Wellemeyer. You mentioned Gracie, his struggles over his last handful of starts and how the elbow issue had slowed him down. Last time around, he got a no decision at Pittsburgh. But Wellemeyer's splits have really been marked over his last handful of starts. 0 and 3 in his last five, and the ERA has swollen to seven and a half. Dave Duncan certainly concerned about his hard throwing right hander. And he's he, and you saw those numbers man it's not like he's it, it, it hadn't been bad luck he's been getting hit hard. Well so much of Wellemeyer's success and it can be said of just about everybody that's ever pitched on this staff with Dave Duncan here owes his success to the pitching coach and there's a base hit into right. Garrett had to freeze between first and second and he's thrown out by Ryan Ludwig. Ryan Ludwig put on a great decoy. He froze Garrett and then a rocket right on the button to just edge Garrett at second base. You watch right here. Ludwig puts on a decoy. I have to wait. Oh, well, you better get there. Yeah, that's inexcusable there as a base runner. You should be able to read that ball better than that. How about Cesar Asturias playing a nice first base there at the second base bag? Fourth outfield assist this year from Ryan Ludwig. So back to back singles, but only one base runner results, and now it's Brian Giles. His 303 average leads San Diego at the start of play today. Giles, one of the few true veteran hitters in Buddy Black's lineup today. And you don't really need to even look at the standings to know that San Diego's lineup is young. After Giles, who has the most service time on this roster for San Diego. It goes to Adrian Gonzalez who's in just his fourth year in the big leagues. It is a very young look for the Padres. A lot of these Padre hitters started the season in Portland in triple A. A lot of them just getting their feet wet in the big leagues. Brian Giles with good road numbers. And in fact, most of San Diego's hitters can claim similar splits, though not as good as Giles. Petco Park in San Diego, known for its pitching friendliness. And the 2 1 pitch to Giles misses off the plate, 3 and 1. Well, San Diego starts play at 37 and 60 this afternoon. They have reached 60 losses faster than uh, any other year. In the last 10, save 2003, which was a historically bad season for the Padres. And the St. Louis Cardinals going in another direction in the central. Full count to Giles now, three and two. And the Padres were certainly built around their starting pitching staff. Giles with big career numbers against St. Louis. As many years in the central division as a Pittsburgh Pirate, he's quite comfortable and happy to be back in this division on the road. There goes Gonzalez and the pitch is taken high for ball four. Cardinals defensively have played very well this year despite a couple of errors yesterday that did not come back to haunt them at a 987 team fielding percentage. That's tied with San Diego, ironically, for the best in the National League. And Troy Gloss not only having a big year at the plate, having a fine year on defense as well. Just a pro's pro in the box and a shot of Troy Gloss. You just don't 
realize he's been around a long time now. Here's Adrian Gonzalez now San Diego's lone all star representative this season and he lays off the first Weldemeyer offering a ball and no strikes. Here Molina not liking what he's seeing from Weldemeyer and I would imagine Cardinal fans aren't liking what they're seeing as well. Really two base hits. One you got a, a fortunate force play at second base and then a walk to the first three batters of this game. Gonzalez and Giles aboard for the younger Gonzalez brother one away here just underway in the top of the first second year on the job for the former Angels pitching coach and left hander Bud Black two balls and no strikes to Gonzalez you know we talked about Dave Duncan a moment ago crazy as you take a look at the way they're defending Gonzalez more or less up the middle. He has made so many on this staff better at their craft over the years. Gonzalez with a shot out to center field and Keel got a bad read and it sliced away from him. Edgar Gonzalez being waved around to score being driven in by his brother and San Diego takes a one nothing lead. I don't know what happened here. This ball just really sliced on Ann Keel. He thought he had to run over in the gap. Too late. Whoa. He's got to trek all the way back to the fence to get this back in. Really, I'm surprised only one run scored there. Man. They're going to hang an error on Ann Keel on this play, so no RBI credited to Gonzalez. Is that a tough error, you think? I. In absolute non agreement with that call right there. That's not good. That's a double. That ball was hit so hard it was knuckling and slicing. Yeah, I would tend to agree with you. Boy, tough error hung on Ankeel. Here's Kevin Kuzminoff now with runners at second and third. San Diego's on the scoreboard having recorded just one out so far to start the afternoon. Giles at third and Adrian Gonzalez at second. Kuzminov sends a fly ball into center. Another chance for Ankeel. This one a bit more conventional. Tagging up at third base and coming home to score is Brian Giles, and it's 2 0 San Diego. Nice at bat there by Kevin Kuzminov. Got something he can handle in the middle of the zone to drive out to the big part of the park and give his Padres a 2 0 lead. A little better on that one. Doug Gonzalez stays at second base with two gone deciding not to take the chance with two away in the inning. And it's two nothing San Diego with a runner in scoring position now for the rookie Chase Headley who on the first pitch sends a ball to left. Skip Schumacher is under it. And that'll wrap up the first for Wellemeyer. San Diego scores first. It's two nothing Padre. Well Rick and with a misplay in center field that helps San Diego get off to an early lead this afternoon Two nothing Padres and Randy Wolf will face a Tony La Russa authored lineup that looks like this and there's plenty of pop in the middle of that lineup card with uh, Ludwig Pujols gloss and Keel even Yadier Molina hitting over 300 this year Cardinals starting lineup brought to you by Taco Bell think outside the bun. Skip Schumacher set to start things out. St. Louis in an early hole here this afternoon before they dig in for the first time against the 10 year veteran left hander Randy Wolf. Well, Randy Wolf. Off injured Randy Wolf. Still a good pitcher, but boy, what might have been, he's he been able to stay healthy. His first pitch of the ball game's in for strike one to Skip Schumacher. Schumacher had a couple of hits yesterday in St. Louis's game two victory in this set. Cardinals with an 11 7 win a night ago. You see Randy Wolf, short in stature, but big in heart, certainly. A 
guy built more like Billy Wagner, not a Todd Rohemeyer tall guy. Schumacher lines it into left. Headley makes the catch, and there's one gone for Wolf to start the afternoon. Randy Wolf was having some mechanical issues over the last month that he and his pitching coach Darren Ballsley thought they had tackled. He won his second to last start getting into the All Star break, but was in knocked around on Sunday getting into the uh, the layoff against the Atlanta Braves. Here's Ryan Ludwig now with one gone. Oh and one the counts of the St. Louis right fielder. The road has not been a kind place for uh, many of the Padre pitchers. And it hasn't been kind in this series either with guys like Ludwig and Pujols going crazy. And Ludwig takes a breaking ball into left for a base hit. Pretty dramatic splits for Randy Wolf home and road Gracie. And, and really you mentioned it's it's such a pitcher friendly ballpark they play in San Diego Petco Park. And those long fly balls tend to carry out of most other ballparks. And you can see just just about every Padre has that those kind of numbers road and home. Here's Albert Pujols now three hits last night is 354 average second only to Chipper Jones in all of baseball. Pujols has been a particular bully this year against the left handed pitchers as he's hitting a league best 453 against southpaws. Goodness. One out one on for him here in the home first. And it's the 5.5 hole into left field back to back one out singles in the St. Louis first. Just a bullet tried to come in on Albert Pujols. He's just so quick, a big guy that can pull his hands in, get the barrel of the bat to the ball, and hit a bolt through the left side. That's going to bring up the hottest hitter in the game. Troy Gloss is smoking hot. 17 home runs, and you know that total. Consider that it doesn't even lead the roster. No is something that impresses you even more when you talk about how the Cardinals have been scoring runs the last month and the first pitch to the former World Series MVP misses in tight. Gloss trying to convert on a seven game hitting streak this afternoon. He's a cool 16 for 28 with four home runs during the seven game streak. You know, and Gloss is locked on to everything. It's not just one part of the plate. It's not just one particular pitch. Witnesses two home run game here on Thursday. He took a hanging slider deep against the Cy Young Award winner Jake Peavy in the first, and then in the third got him on a fastball. Well, when you're going good like that, Matt, it doesn't matter what you throw. You can hit in out you can hit the high ball the low ball and you can hit fast and slow. There's no way to get you out. Enjoy it while you can because it doesn't last long oh, 688 over the last four games. A ball and a strike from Randy Wolf. Two balls and a strike to the four time All Star. Ludwig at second. Pujols a runner at first with only one gone here as the Cardinals try to counter San Diego's two run top of the inning. Rolled out to second. Edgar Gonzalez flips to green. No relay as Pujols came in with a good slide that broke up a would be throw. Now just another thing that Albert Pujols does well. He plays hard, the good hard slide. To, looks like Khalil Green might might not have got a good handle on that ball. But look at Pujols going in hard. Nothing dirty about that. It's just good hard baseball. So runners at the corners with two gone now for everybody's favorite comeback story. Center fielder Rick Ankeel, 22 home runs to give him a share of the club lead along with Ryan Ludwig. 
it's, it's really a pick your poison. We mentioned how Troy Gloss is, is one of the hottest hitters in baseball right now. You could really say the same of Van Keel. Five for nine to start this series. He's hit more home runs in the last 30 days than anybody in baseball. 13 of them. Twenty second of the year came last night and it broke a six six tie late. They're starting to get pennant fever here in St. Louis. Oh believe it. They're getting jacked up. It's something that Cardinal fans are used to over the years. I'll tell you, I, you know, we'll talk about this as we continue today. Of all the managerial jobs that Tony Lavusa has done, four-time manager of the year, he's in the midst of one of his finest decisions. And Keel pops it up. Khalil Green's under it to keep the Cardinals off the scoreboard in the home first, on to the second. 2-0 San Diego. Fox Saturday Baseball sponsored by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. By Cars.com where confidence comes standard. And by Gillette Fusion Power Phenom. Fusion Power, the world's most comfortable shave. Visiting San Diego on top early here this afternoon. 2 0. Padres is top. Wellemeyer goes back to work and faces Khalil Green, who on the first pitch gets a hold of extra bases into the left field corner. Time to take a look, Gracie, at our Cars.com game comparison this afternoon. Well, for the Padres, you know what? It's been a miserable season so far, so let's... And more than half full lately. He has been red hot. Hey, here's one of the young guys you speak of, catcher Nick Hundley. Runner in scoring position to start the inning for San Diego. Nick Huntley, a second round draft choice from 2005 out of the University of Arizona, and is thought to be in the future plans at catcher for San Diego. You know, part of the storyline for the Padres is not only who's here, some of the young guys from AAA, but who they're without. And they're without both of their opening day catchers, Michael Barrett and Josh Bard. In fact, Buddy Black has two catchers on his big league roster here who started the year at AAA Portland. A lot of beavers. A lot of beavers. Sharp one hopper to short. Cesar is terrific. Still among the best glove men in baseball. Well, that was a terrific play by Asturias. That ball was scalded off the bat of Hundley. The base runner was in his way. He still made it look easy. Tell you what, right now, Todd Wellemeyer is not missing any barrels. Every swing the Padres take has been a rope. So here's Randy Wolf now. Despite the numbers, a pretty good hitting pitcher. One RBI on the year for him so far. Coming in at third, and Wellemeyer misses down and in. You know, we just think of it as we see guys like his tourists, and we saw Troy Gloss at the beginning of the inning. The fact that the Cardinals have reinvented themselves in 2008 with an entirely new left side of the infield. And as good as they were when it was Roland and Renteria and company out there. I don't think anybody would argue that the 2008 version what this team has put together with his tourists and gloss in particular has really paid big dividends to Tony Galusa and Troy gloss when he's healthy he still has plenty of range he's a former shortstop Can you imagine that big man right there a shortstop but at UCLA that's what he was he was an all American still got great hands two balls and no strikes to Randy Wolf. Trick loss, ironically, and it's it's talked about every time he matches up with a San Diego Padres team. He's from the San Diego area and was drafted by the Padres, decided to go to UCLA, and then by the time he came out, he went elsewhere. Of course, began his career with the Angels and had 
had such a great run in Anaheim. Well, he went to UCLA probably because he couldn't get into San Diego State. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Three balls and a strike as you count to Randy Wolf. And there's ball four. We check in for the first time this afternoon with Jeannie Zalasco in Los Angeles. Gentlemen, the Red Sox are in L.A. Kevin Euclid looking very comfortable, don't you think? Top two, one on, one out. That two run home run, his 17th of the season. A Euclid's a career high. It's 2 0 Boston. Jeannie, thanks. The Red Sox still in that unusual position of looking up at the Tampa Bay Rays in the AL East. He's toughed out a win last night. They limped into the break. Boy, did they ever. Losers of seven in a row getting into the layoff as Dave Duncan comes out to chat things over with Wellemeyer. You were at the All Star game. You were there to witness the awkwardness that was the extra innings when Terry Francona was trying to decide what he was going to do with Scott Casimir and how he was going to preserve everybody's integrity and still try to win the ball game. This home field advantage thing has really made uh, for some tight times well, at the All Star game. Absolutely, and Terry Francona knows because he's right there again as far as possibly being in the World Series. On the ground for Ryan, he kicked it, gets it to his terrace for one, but the boot cost him the chance at the double play, and Jody Garrett, who runs well, is aboard at first. Well, that was another missile off the bat of a Padre here. This time, Jody Garrett still almost got it turned. Brendan Ryan stayed with it. Garrett runs too well. So runners at the corners now for Edgar Gonzalez. The older Gonzalez brother singled and scored one of the two first inning runs here this afternoon. Ball and no strikes to count to Gonzalez, who was four for eight in the first two games of this set. Edgar Gonzalez was Cardinal property just a year ago. Played a triple A Memphis all year was not brought back to St. Louis signed in San Diego his hometown team as you just saw as a minor league free agent and what a great story he has been one of the few bright spots in San Diego this year. Well, nobody really expected much from him, but injuries that just about everywhere for San Diego has brought up a lot of guys they didn't expect to be there they're playing well. Once again, Wellemeyer falling behind. I don't care if the team you're facing has the worst record in the National League. It doesn't matter. If you're falling behind 2 0, 3 1, you're going to get hit at this level. You're going to get hit hard. He's fallen behind eight of his first 11 assignments this afternoon, and here's the 2 0 pitch to Edgar Gonzalez. It misses high and away. 3 0 now. Plus, on a hot day like it is today here in St. Louis, your defense is flat footed because they're not expecting the ball to be thrown over the plate. And that's that little, maybe half a step of range that you don't have from your infielders. He's trying to make it three and one now. Yeah, it's a hot one. It's not Old Bush Stadium hot. With that place enclosed. Astro turf on the field, it would get to what a buck 30, buck 40 on the turf. Oh, miserable hot. It got up to 152 one time. <laughs> Gonzalez with a swing and a drive well hit into left field. Schumacher can only watch as that one is gone. Edgar Gonzalez with a tape measure shot that almost got over the back of the bullpen. The rookie second baseman's fifth of the year. And San Diego takes a 5 nothing lead. Well, that ball was absolutely blistered by the old brother. Fastball right down the middle bell tie. And that's what you're supposed to do with those. Flanking off the back of the bullpen back there. That's a long way. Todd Wellmeyer is going to have to go to plan B. There's Brian Giles now with three runs in on the home run by Gonzalez. 
two balls and no strikes to Giles. Boy, Edgar Gonzalez, meanwhile, for a last place team, is going to have to get at least a little bit of consideration at the end of the day if he keeps going on this route for Rookie of the Year honors. He's the Nationals' top hitting rookie at the start of play today. Giles sends a high fly ball out behind second as this tourist circles under it to make the play. Three more for San Diego, however, the Padres have an early 5 0 hit. Saturday baseball is sponsored by Budweiser. Reach for the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Budweiser, the great American lager. Well, Yadier Molina leads things off in the St. Louis second. His 310 batting average second on the team. And his first pitch he sees from Randy Wolf is shot foul. Only Minnesota's Joe Maurer brings a higher batting average to the start of play today among major league catchers. Maurer at 320 as Molina lays off its one and one. Molina also a gold glove cal caliber defender. Two balls and a strike from Randy Wolf. That 310 average also cracks the National League's top 10. Everybody chasing Jones and Pujols atop the chart. Who's your pick for the batting title in the National League now? It's hard to pick against Albert Pujols for anything. I mean, if you had to guess about the next guy to win a triple crown, he's your guess. Well, he, he, he's right there every year in the triple crown numbers. Hasn't happened in a long time in the National League. Not since the 1930s when Joe Ducky Medwick last won a Triple Crown as the National League seen a batting average RBI and home run leader. Molina swings and misses as Hundley finishes with the throw down to first. The strike got credited to Randy Wolf. That wasn't like Ducky. Fox Sports has established Fox Sports Supports, a long-term charitable initiative devoted to raising awareness and financial assistance for health-related charities. Make-A-Wish Foundation as our baseball charity. They grant 13,000 wishes a year to children with life-threatening medical conditions. And to help make wishes come true, bring joy to kids, visit wish.org. There's Cesar is tourist now with one away. You know, everybody's talking about the weather in St. Louis now because it's humid this time right. of year. I got to say, and we've seen it already on the field, you and I have both been here for hotter, more difficult afternoons than this one. Oh, it was much worse on the old carpet. Old Bush Memorial Stadium. I remember a lot of times we would, cheers, we would... Uh, Wait, let the pitcher go out and throw all his warm-up tosses. And on his last toss, we'd take the field. And Old Bush Stadium used to have what they called the sliding pits. The artificial turf everywhere, but a little dirt patch at first, second, and third. And between pitches, Matt, I would have to go and stand on the dirt area because my feet would burn on the carpet. <laughs> There's Todd Wellemeyer now with two gone. Now the stories are legendary about uh, you know soaked cabbage leaves underneath the caps you know bathing your feet in ammonia water to try to cool off on the field at Old Bush Stadium. Of course what's left of Old Bush Stadium uh, doesn't remind folks of anything. One and two to Todd Wellemeyer. Just a hole in the ground and it's a, a hole getting on three years old. have to do something with it, aren't they? Well, there was an article in the St. Louis Post-Dispatch today that talked about uh, what they have deemed uh, DeWitt Lake <laughs> in reference to the ownership group here. It's a real expensive pit in the ground. It's supposed to be a ballpark village with retail. And uh, hopefully they can get that going because the All-Star Game's coming here next year. 
Adrian Gonzalez among the Padres due up as we go to the third. We'll return to St. Louis after a word from your local Fox station. San Diego on top of St. Louis early this afternoon 5 nothing Padres Adrian Gonzalez leads off against Todd Wellemeyer in the third Gonzalez followed by Kuzminoff and Headley. Well Adrian has taken a backseat to brother Edgar so far this afternoon whose three run home run put the Padres on top in the second. Wellemeyer handles the comeback or there's one away. Bruce Dreckman behind home plate trying to stay cool on our Fox sounds of the game this afternoon. Well, can't lie to you, it's hot out here. Edward, how you doing? Stay warm, I got you on that part. Yeah, we, won't, we won't go to the bucket yet. All right. <laughs> Is he talking about the bucket that they just pour over a guy's head? <laughs> That's exactly it. <laughs> the ammonia towels around you. Your face. It, there, there's just nowhere to hide when when you're an umpire. You know the players, they can go into the dugout between innings, and get cool or do what they need to do. The umpires, they're they're out on the field the whole time. There's no place to hide for those rascals. Do you think it's cooler for them, or or was it cooler before when they had the old bubble protector? I think it's much. They're much more. They're hotter now. Because the, the old things, bubble protection. Because the thing's in the shirt. Right. Okay. What do you think? That's just a guess. I, I would guess that you're right about that. I, I couldn't see it being any uh, cooler with the gear on that close to you. Two balls and a strike, meanwhile, to Kevin Kuzminov. Kuzminov bounces it up the middle. His tourist dives and knocks it down, but can't make a play. It's a base hit for Kuzminov. Kuzminov. And let's check in again with Jeannie Zelasco. And we are headed to the Bronx, bottom line. Two out, Yankees trailing, but they still have a shot. At least Wilson Benny did. He would single home Robinson Cano, and guess what? Everybody has three. They like those tall ball, tie a ball games at Yankee Stadium, yes, guys? Well, I think, you know, I think the Yankees are feeling pretty good about themselves, Jeannie, with the addition of Richie Sexton for virtually nothing, and he cashed in with an RBI single yesterday in his first pinstripe appearance. They're getting hot in the Bronx, and they're playing, they're, they're going to have to, because up until the end of this month, Maddie, they're, they're going to be home a lot. After July, they're going to be on the road a bunch. They still have to go out to the West Coast. Chase Headley sends an 0-1 pitch into the corner and left where Schumacher gloved it. So a runner aboard now with two gone for Khalil Green. Green doubled and scored in front of the home run in the second. Yesterday, Green himself hit a home run that snapped him out of an 0 for 23 stretch. His longest drought as a big leaguer without a knock. Let's take a look at the Burger King hot zone for the San Diego shortstop. Oh, I always look forward to this, Matt. <laughs> and it was so interesting, it just, you know, really hot. It, it burnt up. He has never had a hit low and away. Oh boy. Ever. That is. I mean, not even at Clemson did he get a hit. <laughs> Let's go back to last night and take a look at the home run, his ninth of the year. This snapped him out of the 0 for 23, a pitch up and over the plate. That's a long ways for a right hander to hit a baseball. He certainly just cleared it. On a sharp hop for Gloss. Well, he's not sure. Catching everything hit his way. Nothing in the San Diego third. We played two and a half this afternoon. Still five, nothing Padre. The number nine hitter, Brendan Ryan, leads things off in the St. Louis third. That young fan can barely stand to watch, apparently. Ryan Schumacher and Ludwig here against Randy Wolf. Cardinals trailing early today, 5-0 San Diego. 
in the quirky lineup run out by Tony La Russa pays dividends here early with the number nine hitter being Brendan Ryan instead of the pitcher. So now he's got a couple of leadoff type guys, Ryan and then Schumacher right behind him to set the table for those big Henry guys in the middle of the lineup. Oh. That's a tough way to set the table. Brendan Ryan's going to be a little laundry there after being hit by the pitch. A reminder next week on Fox Saturday Baseball. Some will see the Yankees and Red Sox. Others the Braves and Phillies. Coverage begins with the pregame show at 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central, 12.30 Pacific. Check your local listings for the game and time in your area. The Phillies off and running in the NL East. Pitching staff that was bolstered by the addition of Joe Blanton during the week. Boy, Pat Gillick pulled off a pretty big one there. Pretty good coup because even though Blanton's numbers are not real good this year, the guy can pitch. And I think and the Phillies needed some help in their starting rotation. They certainly got it. Jamie Moyer, a winner last night at 73 years old. <laughs> he just keeps winning. You want to know the count to skip Schumacher. Well, in exchange for Joe Bland, Oakland got two of Philadelphia's top four prospects, according to Baseball America magazine, pitcher Josh Outman and second baseman Adrian Cardenas. But Joe Blanton's a guy that can win at the big league level right now. And of the names that we heard last week when we were in Philadelphia, they were talking about Eric Bedard, whose health is a little suspect right now right. and who's going to come pricey. They were talking maybe A.J. Burnett. I think Philadelphia did very well. I think they did very well. I think uh, Joe Blanton is a, is a guy that he's certainly going to help and yeah, sometimes just a change, change of scenery, face some different hitters, ones that don't know you as well in the National League. I think that'll pay dividends. Adrian Gonzalez trying to deke Brendan Ryan. He didn't bite. There goes Ryan. You know, if that play works once every 10,000 times, it's worth it. Yeah, don't you think? I, I think so. I never tried it just because, you know, guys knew I just, I wasn't going to run after it. So <laughs> I would always say, Rhino, go get it. <laughs> so I, I could never really decoy the runner like that. But. but I did get a hidden ball trick one time. You had it done on you? No, I, I I got Mike Sosha. Did you really? I got Mike Sosha. Schumacher grounds it to shortstop. Green to Gonzalez. And the relay back to first is in time to double him up. That was a nifty turn there. The gold glove caliber shortstop. Look at Edgar Gonzalez clearing himself nicely and getting plenty on it to get a speedy Schumacher. Two gone now for Ryan Ludwig. Hey, with the bases empty, I want to hear what happened on Mike Sosha getting nailed on the hidden ball trick. Well, he got a he hit a ball to the oh, so it was bobbled or whatever, and, and uh, the throw to me, and I'm going to say it was Sean Dunstan because uh, it's most likely that Sean Dunstan would make me really have to jump high for a ball. <laughs> so I jumped. He went. Sosha beat it, and I jumped. And, I just kind of kept the ball in my glove the whole time. And uh, uh, Sosh was was real pleased with uh, and he was over there calculating his batting average as he <laughs> as as he took his lead. And uh, I just walked over and tapped him right on the hip with it. And the umpire said, you're out. And Sosha cursed me out my next at bat. He, he was the catcher. He cursed me out. For, it was about an eight pitch at bat and it just it, expletive at, after expletive. <laughs> Three balls and a strike to Ryan Ludwig. I don't know that I've seen a hidden ball trick work at the big league level with my own eyes. Matt Williams was pretty good at it. But Matt Matt was mean spirited. And I can say that because he's my friend and he was my teammate but one time. Do you remember a little shortstop middle infielder named Rafael Bornegal? Sure. Of the Los Angeles Dodgers. His first big league hit is a triple at Dodger Stadium when, when Matt was with the, the Giants. 
So he's, you know, they're throwing the ball, you know, whatever. And he's standing on, he's got his foot on third base, and Matt's got the ball. And Matt goes up to him and he says, hey, can you move your foot? I want to clean the bag. Oh. I want to clean the dirt off the bag. <laughs> so the guy, so Bornegal, who just is a rookie, and here's this big, strong veteran guy. He asks you to, hey, step off the bag, let me clean it. You go, okay. And he tags him out. Oh, that's beautiful. That's mean spirit. Here's a big, strong first baseman, Albert Pujols, with a runner aboard and two away. We take a look at Albert Pujols' Burger King hot zone. Oh, I love these. That doesn't surprise me. I'm at, at, actually kind of surprised that he's. Well, 263 is not bad. Well, according to the Burger King hot zone, the only way you can get him out is with something around his eyes or something you throw into the other batter's box because there was a lot of red on. And according to the San Diego Padres, I think they would agree. Albert Pujols has the highest lifetime batting average against San Diego in Padres franchise history. He does it to everybody after the All-Star break. There's a swing and a miss. And it's a ball and two strikes. Slower, slow curve there from Randy Wolf. Even great ones like Albert Pujols can't wait long enough for these Ephesus. Ball and two strikes to the seven time All Star with the first time All Star Ryan Ludwig aboard at first. That one will get into the seats. Not without a good chase by Gonzalez. Still a ball and two strikes to Pujols. Well, among all time Cardinal rankings, the top slugging percentage, more game winning RBI than anybody else, second on the all time home run and intentional walk list, and their numbers that don't show any signs of slowing down. This is Hall of Fame Cardinals that he has passed, guys like Stan Musial, Lou Brock. Still a ball and two strikes. Gina Slaughter. Red Shandies. He's put himself in pretty good company. And a guy who had an opportunity to learn on the job in the late 90s when he was a young player who had come out of relative obscurity in A ball to make an impact at the major league level. And didn't have to do a lot of the heavy lifting in the later part of the 90s because the McGuire Edmonds part of that lineup was right. still intact. But now Albert's the guy. Albert Pujols did a lot of damage against San Diego earlier this year. The Cardinals took a three game series against the Padres in May. And the 2005 National League MVP and seven time All Star had a big series at the plate. And uh, had a particularly memorable inning in which he put two guys on the disabled list. One with a line drive and one with a slide. Mm. Popped him up. Took a sandwich out of the bag with that breaking ball. And Headley makes the catch. Pujols is retired, nothing in the St. Louis third. Still 5 0 San Diego. Saturday baseball sponsored by Burger King who reminds you to have it your way by the new AT&T your world delivered and by Chevy an American Revolution. Visiting San Diego with a five nothing lead through three innings this afternoon rookie catcher Nick Hundley offers at the first pitch from Todd Wellemeyer and chases Rick and Keel to the track. But with San Diego on top 5 nothing, we visited with Padres manager Bud Black between innings and we asked him specifically about his second baseman Edgar Gonzalez who has done everything he's asked him to do this year. He really has uh, Matt uh, since he's come up he's done everything uh, we've asked him to do. Uh, he's had a little spark to the offense. He's hitting over 300 uh, making plays in the field. 
uh, playing with a lot of energy. So it's good to it's good to see out of a guy who told a long time in the minor leagues. As a former starting pitcher, but you've pitched with big leads before. Is it any different a mindset with a five run lead as it is a, a closer game? You try not to mark it. You, you try to continue to uh, pitch fundamental baseball. Get get ahead with the first pitch. Put guys away as early as you can. Uh, you can't let down, especially against this lineup. You, you know, we've seen those four guys in the, middle of the lineup the last couple of nights do some damage, so you can't let up at all. Buddy, thanks for the time. As always, good luck the rest of the weekend. Thanks, guys. Good luck, Skip. Okay. Well, this went off to a good start for Bud Black. Padres with their biggest lead of the series so far. A ball and a strike to count to Randy Wolf. Top of the order, Jody Garrett waiting next. One out, base is empty. Broken back ground ball to second. Non maple broken bat. Let's check in with Genie's Alaska in Los Angeles. Well, guys, turns out the Brewers, CC Zabathi and Ben Sheets are a one two punch on the mound. And with the bat, this is Ben Sheets, the all star, working it in San Francisco, doubling home Jason Kendall Sheets' fourth RBI of the year. One nothing Brewers, top three. Millie Wake, Genie, Algonquin for the good land. And right on the heels of these Cardinals in the division leading Chicago Cubs four back at the start of play. Well what a great race that Central Division is in for in August and September. There's a lot of great races this year in baseball. In the American League East Minnesota's making a big run in the American League Central and man you hate to say it because it sounds comical but the National League West is actually a pretty good race. <laughs> Just with a lot of bad teams. War of attrition where Arizona and Los Angeles start play today tied at two games under 500 in first place in the West. <laughs> one ball and one strike to count to Jody Garrett as Todd Wellemeyer looks for his first one two three inning of the afternoon. And Garrett bounces a one one pitch to second. They go down in order in the fourth. Middle of the fourth, it's still 5 0 San Diego. <laughs> Troy Gloss leads things off in the St. Louis fourth. Cardinals down 5 0 early this afternoon. Gloss and Keel and Molina here against Randy Wolf. And Troy Gloss wastes no time and dumps a base hit, maybe more into right center field. That's scooting all the way to the track. And Gloss will coast into second with a leadoff double. Well, the red hot Troy Gloss doesn't try to pull this pitch. He stays inside it, keeps his hands close to his body and drives it to right. He didn't flip that ball to right field. He drove it. Look at the head stay down. The hip pops. Man, that is a strong swing. And he's just locked in. Troy Gloss having such a fantastic first few months as a Cardinal. Here's Ricky and Keel now. So Gloss keeps his hitting streak going and runs it to eight in a row. He's in scoring position to start the inning. First pitch is fouled back. Boy, Rick Ankeel has certainly transformed his career. Remember back in the 2000 season, an 11 and 7 record in 30 starts, but control issues in the 2000 playoffs. And in three games, four innings of work, 11 walks. Dave Duncan and Tony LaRussa could only shake their heads. Ankeel went away, he went to the minors, he was hurt recast himself as a position player a lot of people thought that the club was just doing him a favor keeping him around right. as it turns out it's the other way around he has been perhaps everybody's comeback player of the year in 2008 amazing yeah everybody in baseball for the first oh, month of the season Matt including yourself all talking about Micah Owings out for the Arizona Diamondbacks a pitcher that could just hit and hit home runs and all that I remember getting, getting a lot of questions have you ever seen a, a guy like that have you ever seen a guy like Mike Owens I was, oh yeah I've seen seen a guy and, and then some his name's Rick Ann Keel he's playing center field for the guard breaking ball catches the corner it's one and two to him you know in watching Ann Keel as a hitter 
has that rare quality and I liken it to Bernie Carbo in the 1975 World Series the pinch hit home run he hit against Cincinnati where he went 0 and 2 and looked awful on yeah. two miserable hacks fouled the ball off his leg screwed himself into the ground and Keel is that type of hitter that can look so bad in a plate appearance and then get you and beat you on a home run to win a game. Little chip shot back to Wolf. And he gets Ankeel by a step one away. Boys and Girls Clubs of America is the official charity of Major League Baseball, reaching more than four million kids worldwide. Together, they create a positive place for kids. Here's Yadier Molina now with a man at second and one gone. Rick Ankeel hit a home run yesterday. And uh, Tony Larusa certainly appreciated the plate appearance. 12 pitches. Started 0-2. Battled back, evened the count, filled the count, and then hit the home run late. Hit a tape measure shot to right center field. He had a 17 pitch at bat back in April. God, he was one of the best pitchers before he had his control issues. He's one of the best pitchers I've ever seen. I faced him one time and uh, I, I, I struck out. Are you just saying that because you're a left handed hitter? And he was no fun. He, he threw in the mid 90s with one one of the best curveballs. And now he's one of the he's an all star caliber center fielder now that just doesn't happen. Randy Wolf wants to roll over the signs once again. Owen oh won the count to Yadier Molina, one out runner at second. Five nothing San Diego here in the fourth. Yeah, sometimes it's that backhanded compliment when you talk about a guy. You know, he can hit for a pitcher. Right. I know Tim McCarver, our colleague here at Fox, loves it when people say he runs well for a catcher. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. And Keel is just a great hitter. Doesn't matter if he right. was a pitcher in a previous life. He, he's, he's a rare athlete. That you find in baseball. On the ground for Khalil Green. Lost to third, and there are two gone here in the fourth. And you were talking, you made mention that Ankeel's one of those guys, Matt, that you said can really look bad on a couple of swings like Bernie Carbo and then beat you with a home run. It reminded me, Cardinal fans will remember a, a great Cardinal that was a lot like that. He wouldn't beat you with home runs, but, but no, nobody could look worse on two swings than Willie McGee. I mean, he could look awful on a couple of pitches and then hit a rocket into the gap on the third pitch. First pitch to Cesar as Turris misses inside. Well, that's nicely done right there by the youngster Hundley. When you've got a big lead, you don't want to give up a cheapie. You want to make the Cardinals earn it. You got to make them swing the bat. As Turris lines it to second, and Randy Wolf hangs another zero this afternoon. We played four in St. Louis. Padres on top, five nothing. Well, Todd Wellemeyer hoping for some momentum after a one, two, three top of the fourth. We'll go back to work here in the fifth and face Edgar Gonzalez, Brian Giles, and Adrian Gonzalez for San Diego. Gonzalez sends a fly ball to foul territory. His loss makes the catch on the pop. We talked to Cardinal manager Tony LaRusso between innings, and we asked for a status update on a couple of his DL starters, Chris Carpenter and Adam Wainwright. Well, first of all, the guys that have pitched deserve a lot of credit. I mean, from the day of the first day of spring training, they've done all the work before, and then when they go out, they compete. You know, Todd's having a little rough start today, but they've really been good. Dave Duncan does a great job as you can do. But we're hopeful. Uh, Chris Carpenter pitches tomorrow for the first time in a real game, and everything so far has been working real well. We'll think we'll get him back. And Wainwright's making a lot of progress, so we, we have help coming. Makes your job a little bit easier when you got four guys in the lineup red hot. Yeah, I hope that's true. The next six innings, but uh, no, we, we've had a 
all year long. Somebody's been swinging well. And right now we've got those four guys. And before that was a couple other guys. So it's been a lot of fun to be with this team. Tony, thanks for your time as always. Best of luck the rest of the way. Thank Good you. luck, Tony. All right, thanks. You know, back to what we were speaking about earlier, Gracie. Tony La Russa has done some masterful jobs managing in Chicago and Oakland, of course, here in St. Louis. It's years like this when the Cardinals weren't counted on to be uh, as big a factor in the Central when you really have to tip your cap to a guy who's in his 30th year already managing here in the big leagues. Well, Tony's done, as you said, a lot of great things. I, I don't know if he's ever done a better job with the team than he's done with this one. Not having Chris Carpenter, Mark Holder, with a kind of a patchwork starting rotation with a bunch of former relievers. Well, they really are without horses. I mean, if, if, if you had told somebody in the middle of the last season that moving forward next year the Cardinals will be without this foursome in their rotation, you'd have them pegged for the bottom of the division. Absolutely. They'd be battling Pittsburgh for the seller. That's that's the kind of job that La Russa has done and his staff. Hal McCray, Duncan, and the rest of them. Here's Adrian Gonzalez now with a man aboard and one gone. It's amazing too because Tony La Russa is is still fighting I think the legend of Whitey Herzog here internally in St. Louis. There are so many longtime Cardinal fans that uh, they still consider Whitey the all time skipper here. And back before that Red Shandy's all the years he was he was there 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 have been some terrific managers here for the last 40 years. And some some banners a great winning tradition here in St. Louis still nothing in two to Adrian Gonzalez there was an official scorers change by the way on the ball that Gonzalez hit in the first that was initially ruled an error on Rick and Keel the official scorer upon second thought and probably after hearing you dress him down <laughs> decided to change that to a double good Gonzalez bounces it to second. Ryan misses the tag, but gets Gonzalez at first. So Giles survives on base. That's really a nice play by Ryan. He tries to make the tag. Once he can't make the tag, he stays with the play and gets an out. That's the bottom line. Get an out. Kevin Kuzman off the batter now with Giles in scoring position and two gone. Kuzmanoff has driven in a run for San Diego in all three games of the series now. Let's take a look again at the ball that eluded Ann Keel in the first. That ball is just mashed. And on a windy day, the ball is slicing. I just, I just don't see that being an error. No. I think they got it right. <laughs> oh, and two to Kuzminov. Well, after a couple of really shaky innings in the first and second, Wellmeyer throwing the ball a lot crisper. Giles in scoring position with two gone. 0 oh 2 to the second year third baseman Kevin Kuzminov. Kevin Kuzminov, the only player in Major League history to have hit a grand slam, not in the first plate appearance he ever made as a big leaguer, on the very first pitch he saw in the big leagues. No kidding. A slam. And I don't care whose career you're talking about. It's all downhill from there. Hey, that's that's really uh, if he had to do it all over again I'd say, have to say he shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Hit the slam. Expectations son. Shut it down. Take it on home. <laughs> Break out the podium right there and just retire. The 0 2 pitch to him is lined into center. 
And Angeal makes the play to keep the Padres off the scoreboard. We played four and a half. It's still five nothing San Diego. Fox Saturday Baseball sponsored by Chevy and American Revolution. The number eight spot to pitcher Todd Wellemeyer leads things off in the St. Louis fifth back alongside Mark Grace Matt Vasquez and five nothing San Diego middle of the afternoon here today. It'll be Wellemeyer Ryan and Schumacher for the Redbirds. Well, so far so good for Randy Wolf. Trying to snap out of a, a woeful stretch of road starts something that we talked about earlier. And as we reach the uh, the trading deadline, the soft deadline, Gracie, Randy Wolf's name has been bandied about as a guy that some teams may have interest in coming on the end of July. But his stock's kind of fallen here in the last month just because he hasn't been throwing the ball well in front of a national audience. What better way to get your stock back on the rise and to throw well against a very good hitting Cardinal team. And now a situation here, Matt, where Tony LaRusse's lineup, now all of a sudden it didn't quite work out very well for him. The eight hole, and that's your pitcher, a light hitting pitcher leading off the inning. Almost hit him. Instead, it's three balls and two strikes to Todd Wellemeyer. See that Wellemeyer really working up a sweat. Over a hundred on the field. Pitchers almost would rather just go back and sit in the dugout. But instead he gets a face hit. So Wellemeyer aboard. Well, we talk about Randy Wolf maybe headed elsewhere around the trading deadline. The Cardinals are said to be interested buyers as we approach the end of the month. And for more, we check in with FoxSports.com's Ken Rosenthal. Matt, Mark, Tony La Russa has said he wants better protection for Albert Pujols, but the Cardinals' number four and five hitters have actually been among the most productive in the National League. The team's greater need by far is a left-handed reliever, and for a change, such pitchers are in ample supply. The prices on the Rockies' Brian Fuentes and Pirates' Damaso Marte remain high, but by July 31st, the Cardinals should be able to get the pitcher they need. Well, Ken, thanks. And, you know, isn't it like Tony La Russa to kind of keep something in his hip pocket and not really disclose what they're after if, in fact, they're looking for left-handed relief help? Uh, Tony wasn't going to play that card very publicly. The Cardinals, uh, certainly under Walt Jockety, had been very active in pre-deadline deals in the past. We'll go back to that page in a moment as Brendan Ryan shoots the pitch foul. Ronnie Belliard and Jeff Weaver were brought on in July of 2006 when they made their World Series run. Of course, Scott Rowland, folks forget, that was a pre-deadline deal in 2002. And speaking of left-handed setup guys, they went out and got Jason Christensen in 2000 from the Bucks For Jack Wilson. Jeff Weaver did some really good things here for the Cardinals. Oh, he sure did. I, you know, nobody looked at that deal at the time as being as important as it ended up being when the Cardinals won the World Series in 2006. He ended up chasing large dollars in Seattle and back in the American League and that's where the fun ended again for him. Still nothing in tune to Brendan Ryan. Well, again, all those deals were consummated under the old administration here. While Jockety has since moved on and uh, shipped himself off to Cincinnati, and we'll see if the new administration stays as active in these pre-deadline weeks. Swing and a miss as Ryan finally succumbs to the Randy Wolf breaking ball. Take a look at the Abadard in-game box score for the Cardinals. In the middle of the lineup has been active today, though not as productive as they had been in the first two games of the series. Ludwig Pujols and Gloss all with base hits. Troy Gloss has extended his hitting streak to an eight-gamer with a base hit this afternoon.
there's the current general manager, John Mosley act there, the man behind the curtain, if you will. First year on the job, and big shoes to fill. So far, so good, though, from the GM's office. I think he's done a terrific job. Keeping the payroll manageable. And keeping the boys in red near the top. Counts two balls and no strikes to Skip Schumacher. Nope. You know, in the interest of cross promoting, as we've just given uh, FoxSports.com a blatant plug, we had the chance to chat with Skip Schumacher on Fox Sports Radio this morning. We asked him about why he wears number 55. You know, this is not a spring training invitee. No. It's it's July, Skip. You made the club. <laughs> and he told us that that's the uh, that's the first number he was assigned at his first big league spring training, and he has grown fond of it. The clubs tried to talk him out of it. Ball four, and he's aboard. Here is today's sprint game summary. The Padres got on the board early with two in the first, three in the second. And St. Louis, meanwhile, has had trouble picking up their base runners, 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position. Here's Ryan Ludwig now, a single and a base on balls this afternoon. Ludwig cashed in in an opportunity like this one yesterday and hit a three run home run. His fourth straight game with a dinger. Let's take you back to last night. This is Edgar Gonzalez from earlier today. We'll take you back to last night in a moment. Owen won the count to Ryan Ludwig. Make it a ball and a strike. Slugging a cool 6.02 at the start of play this afternoon. Hey. Good oh, curveball on the corner. What a pitch. That'll even buckle a right handed hitter. Cool drink, Varman. <laughs> I don't think that tray is going to last long. Two balls and two strikes to count to Ryan Ludwig. We talk about his homering in four straight games. Five straight is the major league high this year. Marcus Timms, Adam Dunn, and twice Chase Utley have homered in five in a row this year. Ludwig hits the hole on the right side. That's going to load the bases as Jose Okendo holds Wellemeyer at third. And the Cardinals have filled him up here with one gone. Well, just such a pretty piece of hitting there. Albert Pujols, the scheduled batter with the bases loaded. He's in his spot to do some damage. Damage he did back on the 21st of May, not only with his productivity, but with what happened on the field. This gruesome comebacker that derailed Chris Young. Young still on the disabled list and hopes to be back soon. And then in that very same inning, scoring a run and knocking Josh Bard out of the game. Bard injured his ankle here. He's still on the disabled list. In about a five minute span, Albert Pujols knocked out two of San Diego's primetime players. And again, both are on the mend and hope to be back soon. They've been out a while. And in fairness to Albert Pujols, nobody on the field felt worse about what had happened that night than he did. It was just baseball. Pujols wastes no time here into the gap in left center field. It's going to score at least two. Here comes Ludwig being waved around. The throw's cut off, 
And Albert Pujols has driven in three with a two base hit. For a meeting on the mound with pitching coach Darren Balsley. I'm assuming he didn't say throw him a fastball down the middle, but that's what he got. And he just buries it into left center field. And we have got a brand new ball game. Albert Pujols continues to hurt the Padres. Here's Troy Gloss now with a chance to knock pool holes in. Gloss has reached on a fielder's choice and doubled today. Well, these four hitters just continue to impress. Quick throw into second is very close, but pool holes just back. A lot closer than Pujols would like it to be. A not so comfortable two run lead now for Buddy Black and the Padres. Here's the nothing and one to Gloss fouled away at 0 and 2. Well, of all the guys that changed addresses in the offseason, none has been more productive than Troy Gloss. 61 runs batted in here in St. Louis. And they're not missing Scott Rowland as much as they thought they would here. It's working out very well for, for the Cardinals, that deal or that situation. Surprised, one and two. Surprised on the bottom of their graphic that Miguel Tejada only 44 RBIs. Kind of expect more from the former MVP. They all came in one bunch too. It seemed like he had a, you know, a two or three week stretch where he was knocking in runs like crazy. Meanwhile, Randy Wolf with a long inning here in the fifth. There's only one gone. Another throw into second. And that's an unbelievably good play there by Edgar Gonzalez. I think they need to quit monkeying around with Albert Pujols trying to pick him off at second base and worry about the hitters. Well, that's a terrific play to save 90 feet by Gonzalez. Rick and Keel waits on deck with only one gone. It hit him. It got him. Or did it? Well, they're saying it did. Bruce Dreckman's bringing him back. And here comes Tony La Russa to take up the argument. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, and a whistle. <laughs> and you know what, if I'm. Troy Gloss, the way I'm swinging the bat, I'm not so sure I want to be given first base right there. I might want to try and tie the ball game up. Might get a piece of the shirt. No, I don't think so. What do you think? No, no. I agree with the umpire. And a breaking ball makes Gloss swing and miss. There are two gone. Let's take a look at our Gillette Fusion Power Phenom trivia question this afternoon. Speaking of Albert Pujols, the National League's Rookie of the Year in 2001, who was the last San Diego Padre to earn Rookie of the Year honors? Rick and Keel swings at the first pitch and hits a flare into short right that's going to score Pujols. If there's a better middle of the lineup in the National League right now, I'd be hard pressed to name it. Just a breaking ball off the end of the bat. Right out in front of Giles. Who holds scores easily.
a four run bottom of the fifth inning. And now Yadier Molina lines to shortstop to retire the side. Plenty of damage in the fifth. The Cardinals are on the board for four. They've made it a one run ball game in St. Louis. Fox Saturday Baseball is sponsored by Sprint. The Samsung Instinct from Sprint now playing on the Now Network by Avidart. And by the auto parts experts at AutoZone. Get in the zone. AutoZone. St. Louis hangs a four-run fifth to make this just a one-run ball game. And Todd Wellemeyer watched uh, and actually participated in the four-run rally. It has tightened things up in the middle of the afternoon. Chase Headley, Khalil Green, and Nick Hundley here for San Diego in the sixth. It's so important for Wellemeyer to go out and have a quick, breezy inning here. Keep all that momentum in your dugout. A soft liner to right. Ludwig lays out and makes the great catch. Boy, that might remind some of the grab he made at the All-Star game on Tuesday. Well, he just had some great closing speed right there. Head stays right on it. Makes a pretty catch. We'll take you back to Tuesday night. Ryan Ludwig was in the other corner. And a great tuck and roll. Yankee Stadium on Tuesday. So with one gone of the bases empty, here's Khalil Green, who has doubled and grounded out today. We talked about his home run last night, snapping out of an 0 for 23 stretch. The question had to be asked at that point. Dude is 0 for 23. What's the worst 0 for in the big leagues this year? Franklin Gutierrez of the Indians swallowed an 0 for 32 earlier this season. Well, I know you'll get a big kick out of this, Matt. I had a 1 for 32 stretch okay, one time. That stunk. And didn't hit any of them hard. Gone here in the sixth as we check in again with Jimmy Zelasco. Home run derby's broken out in Florida. Top five. This is Pat Burrell with a solo shot. His 24th home run of the season. Tie ball game. We're going to go to the bottom of the fifth. Jeremy Romita, solo shot. The Marlins lead baseball in home runs. The Phillies are second. Here's the proof. Here's the score. 5-4 Marlins bottom five. Jeannie, thanks. We've talked so much about the great race in the NL Central. You know, that East is going to be a tight run as well with the Mets playing a lot better baseball. Florida has hung around a lot longer than folks thought. And Philadelphia is likely the team they're all going to chase the rest of the way. Well, there is a lot of talent down in South Florida. I love watching Andy Ramirez. What a player he is. Phillies on top of the Mets by just a game at the start of play this afternoon. And I think you'd also be mistaken if you ever counted out Bobby Cox, wouldn't you? Yeah, and it's crazy because they're not hitting at all right now. But they're only six and a half out. A one, two, three, sixth by Todd Wellemeyer. He and the Cardinals still trail by a run. We take a look at our auto zone strike zone for this afternoon's two starting pitchers. Both Randy Wolf and Todd Wellemeyer have, for the most part, been around the plate all day. And, be, and when you throw in that many strikes, especially Wellmeyer, the last four innings, he's been ahead the entire time. You're going to throw a lot of goose eggs up there when you jump ahead, as Randy Wolf does here on Cesar Asturias. Wolf has walked only two this afternoon, and he gets his tourists, Wellemeyer and Brenda Bryan here in the St. Louis sixth. As that one's hooking foul into the seats. 0-2 oh to the 2005 All-Star shortstop Cesar Asturias. The long one last night, Cardinals winning 11 to 7. Both managers had to go to their bullpens early and often. Greg Maddox won only four for San Diego and Braden Looper three plus for the Red Bulls. Two 
balls and two strikes. San Diego had some bullpen activity last half inning. Brian Corey, a right hander. With him. Fastballs bounced up the middle, smothered by Green to throw the first, not in time. Boy, great hustle on both ends of this play. Well, it's a terrific play by Khalil Green. Just too much speed from Cesar Asturias. The dive across the bag. All you young players at home, that is actually slower than keeping your feet, and it's also a good way to tear up a shoulder. So I would highly recommend running through the bag. Here's Wellemeyer now in a bunt situation with the leadoff hitter aboard. Kuzminoff creeps in from third. Wellemeyer gets it down. Hundley has only one play. That's the first well executed by the starting pitcher, Todd Wellemeyer. I think he's going to run out to right field. Okay. We'll do a victory lap. Let's answer this afternoon's Gillette trivia question. Albert Pujols won the National League's Rookie of the Year award in 2001. The last Padre to claim the honor, Benito Santiago in 1987. Benny still holds a franchise record for uh, consecutive games with a base hit. A major league rookie for a cat for record rather for a rookie and a catcher. Boy, in 1987 he had a great year, hit 318 home runs. Threw people out from his knees and his rear end. And had the great mustache. Rocking the sweet Jerry Curl back then. Here's Brendan Ryan with a runner at second. I had a year with Benito Santiago in Chicago. What a great teammate. On the ground for Kuzminov. Is Turris to third? Kevin Kuzminov got the yips when it looked as though he might have a chance to throw in behind his Turris. Nobody was at second, and by the time he threw to first, his feet were a mess, and he yanked it. And not the greatest of efforts there by the first baseman, Adrian Gonzalez, as well. It looked like he tried to keep his foot on the bag instead of just catch the ball and, and give up first base now by trying to keep the foot on the bag he gives up third and second base and the double play is no longer in order it's kind of the way it's gone for the Padres this year so after the error runners at second and third only one gone now for Skip Schumacher Opportunity for Schumacher to turn around a trend. His 160 batting average against left handers is the third worst in Major League Baseball. San Diego has its bullpen hot again. It's the right hander Clay Meredith, ground ball specialist, who's up now. <laughs> and whoever it is, is going to have to deal with the teeth of this Cardinal lineup here shortly. It just seems like every time there's guys on base, Ludwig, Pujols, Gloss, Yankee, they're lurking. Throw into third, very close, but not in time to get his tourists. Well, I really like that play, though. The young catcher, no fear, and a close play at third base. to Schumacher on the ground to shortstop. San Diego concedes the run for the out, and the Cardinals have tied it. And an RBI ground ball from Skip Schumacher. Just going on contact. That's all it takes. There's the contact. Bud Black and the Padres are going to concede the tie. And the Cardinals get just that. So with the score even up at five apiece, Randy Wolf being removed from the ball game. The Padres go to the bullpen, and we'll be right back.
score tied five apiece. Here's our Zantac relief pitcher profile. Heartburn attack it. Zantac. Enter right hander Clay Meredith. Clay Meredith, the submarine right hander, as you said earlier, the ground ball specialist. He's got a runner aboard, a run having scored to tie the ball game with two gone for Ryan Ludwig. A single, an error, and a ground ball has done the trick for St. Louis here in the home sixth to bring the Cardinals even for the first time since the first pitch was thrown. Well, back to back gorgeous sliders from Meredith. Jump ahead 0 and 2. San Diego playing Ludwig straight away. The nothing and two home misses outside. Well for Clay Meredith he has come on leaner times since debuting in 2006 and setting a franchise record with 33 plus consecutive scoreless innings. In fact the entire Padre relief core has fallen on lean times. One of the National League's best in the last three seasons but 2008 has been a different story. Well, that's got to be tough on a manager. Your starters go out there and get you some leads. You end up not shaking hands after the game. That one's airmailed past Hundley, a 390 feet aboard for Ryan. Well, perhaps the most disconcerting number of all for Buddy Black and Darren Balsley, the pitching coach in San Diego. A major league worst. 47% of inherited runners have come around to score this year. And if you scratch at the surface, that, that may be a historically bad thing. See, there's, all four. there's an example right there, Matt. Meredith had him 0 2. And then, like a lot of young pitchers, he tried to strike Ludwig out rather than just get him out. All he had to do is put some sink on a pitch, keep it down in the zone, and get. And, and do what he does, get ground balls. Instead, he's tried to strike him out, missed badly with four, and now he gets a nice big hunk of Albert Pujols to deal with. <laughs> Runners in the corners for Pujols. Huge career numbers against San Diego. The 365 batting average, the best in history against a team that's been around for 40 years. And there have been some Cardinal players that have done a number or two on San Diego Padre pitching. Keith Hernandez, Willie McGee, Lou Brock. Nobody has done the kind of damage that Albert Pujols has. Green knocks down the ground ball. Good enough to score a run. Albert Pujols has his fourth RBI of the afternoon, and St. Louis has taken a 6 to 5 lead. That's a great effort there by Khalil Green. Ball almost took his glove off. Albert Pujols. Four RBIs on this afternoon. So now Troy Gloss has a chance. That's the thing. This lineup just keeps coming at you. It doesn't let go. Gloss has doubled in three tries this afternoon. You can now close a complete book on Randy Wolf and the inherited runner that uh, he left for Meredith having come around to score. All six hung on the line of the starter. Gloss sends one into right, just foul. Well, Matt, I don't know about you, but I haven't seen many five run leads coughed up quite this quickly. A big error by Kuzminov. Led to 200 runs here in the sixth inning. Well, the Cardinals came back last night from a 6 to 3 deficit. 
Coming back all the way from down five nothing today as Gloss takes another pitch into right field. Giles fighting the sun running out of room and he makes a great running catch. What a play by Brian Giles. Let's hope he's okay. Boy, he hit that wall hard. Cardinals have taken the lead. Will return to St. Louis after a word from your local Fox station. You're watching Major League Baseball on Fox. Well, Todd Wellemeyer will go back out for his seventh inning here this afternoon. He has patiently held the fort while the Cardinals have claimed a lead for the first time this afternoon. So San Diego trying to play from behind down a run will pinch hit to lead off the seventh. It'll be Scott Hairston batting in the ninth spot and then the top of the order Jody Garrett and Edgar Gonzalez. Cardinals with four in the fifth two in the sixth. They have a six to five lead as we start the seventh. Bullpen getting hot behind Wellemeyer. Randy Flores was just activated off the disabled as yesterday. One of a couple of available southpaws. One and one to the X Diamondback. But I think Tony La Russa and Dave Duncan have got to be encouraged with the way Todd Wellemeyer turned the corner today. He just dug deep. Just a lot of pride. And a lot of quality strikes. Like that one. Well you mentioned early I mean he, there were some really hard hit balls against him in the first and second. Look at that slider right to the outside corner. Nothing Harrison's going to be able to do with that. Sometimes it just takes a little while. It takes 30, 35 pitches to find that release point, to find that confidence. And you're seeing a lot more swings like that off of Wellemeyer than you did in the first couple of innings, as we were talking about. I mean, everything was hit hard in those first two innings. Look at the location just off the outside corner, another defensive swing. Brian Corey and Clay Hensley up in the San Diego bullpen and a called strike three taken by Hairston. Tuesday's All-Star game was full of great performances, including the one by Adam Wilbur, winner of take Baby Roots Take Me Out, to, me the out the to the Ball Game video game. contest. A little sampling of Adam crowd. leading Take Me Out to the Ball Game Find during the seventh inning stretch. The beloved baseball classic celebrating its 100th birthday in 2008. We hate to cut the performance short, but there's a pitching change that out was the field. winner. <laughs> Wellemeyer got here in the seventh. We'll be right back. Well, Todd Wellemeyer's afternoon is complete. He hopes to be in the clubhouse looking for his first win since the 5th of May, 5th of June, that is, as he hands the ball to Randy Flores just off the disabled list. Flores missed 16 games as he served some time on the DL due to left ankle tendonitis. Jody Garrett, the first to face the left hander Flores, who the base is empty. Flores, a guy with good stuff, Matt. Problem. For him this year, just hadn't thrown enough strikes. Too many walks. And when you're a reliever, if you come in and you don't throw strikes, it just seems like late walks tend to score. No one to Garrett is in for a strike. Well, it almost appeared that Todd Wellemeyer today, Grace, he got stronger as the afternoon wore on. His only two strikeouts of the day came in the final two batters he would face. Hadn't allowed a hit since the third. Yet Tony La Russa has lifted him here in favor of his bullpen. Well, Tony knows his guys more than anybody, but certainly I was a little surprised that Tony went out and got him. He was pitching beautifully. Two balls and two strikes is account to Jody Garrett. You just saw the veteran right-hander Russ Springer up in the bullpen for St. Louis. And of course, 
those that have watched Tony La Russa manage teams know about his fondness for the situational pitching matchup. Largely credited with starting that movement in uh, in Chicago, but more so in Oakland in the late part of the 80s. And there's ball four to Garrett. Well, not what Larusa had in mind when he went to the bullpen. Well, let's see if Tony wants to leave him in there to face today's home run hitter, Edgar Gonzalez, from the right side. Garrett started that plate appearance 0 and 2. And ends up drawing a base on balls. Gonzalez announced. And here comes Tony LaRusso once again. It'll be Russ Springer to face the right handed batting Edgar Gonzalez. Another pitching change, and we'll be right back. Your Flomax game summary St. Louis was facing a 5 0 deficit early this afternoon, four in the fifth. Two in the sixth has brought the Cardinals back. They lead it by a run. And they're in protect mode here. As with one out in the seventh, Tony LaRusa has made his second pitching change of the inning for the 16 year veteran, right hander Russ Springer. Refound himself here in St. Louis, did Russ Springer. Been, well, rather a journeyman, kind of his entire career, but he's thrown the ball very well here. Edgar Gonzalez is homered this afternoon. His three run shot in the second made it five nothing early. A hole that the Cardinals have since dug their way completely out of and the slider starts him with a strike. Home run number five for the rookie second baseman. Nearly cleared the back of the bullpen. Oh and one to Gonzalez with Garrett aboard and one away. You know, I think uh, oftentimes that the, the term journeyman indicates a guy who is uh, maybe a lesser than but in the case of Russ Springer it, it certainly uh, is a testament to his longevity just because he's bounced around a little bit and I know this is a guy that goes back to your vintage started his career with the Yankees he's been an angel. Diamondback, a Philly, an Astro. Pitched in the postseason four times. Was a teammate of mine in Arizona. Thirty-nine years old and in the midst of a very good year. Pitched a scoreless inning last night. Tough customer. He's a guy you want on your side if the bench is clear. Russ Springer's been around so long he was traded for Jim Abbott when he switched uniforms between the uh, Yankees and Angels in the early 90s. Tying run on base for San Diego here in the seventh. Jason Isring has it. Loosening up for a possible late appearance here this afternoon. You know that's one thing that that certainly has not gone according to plan here for St. Louis fans. Their bullpen has not been a lights out bunch though they're pitching well in this series. Ron Vallone one of the left handed setup specialists and another senior statesman. This game is officially put on the brakes. Those are numbers that uh, aren't much better than those of the San Diego Padres. The Cardinals have blown 22 saves this year. That's the most in Major League Baseball. Seven of those blown saves have been the responsibility of Jason Isringhausen, who you saw a moment ago. Now, there's no Dennis Eckersley shutting it down lights out style here in St. Louis. He's been so good for so long here. This year's just been a, a tussle for him. And Gonzalez lays off a slider to make it a two and two countdown. There's a slider down and away. 
Gonzalez was able to check it up. Brian Giles on deck next for San Diego. A runner aboard with one gone. San Diego down one in the top of the seventh. And Edgar Gonzalez won't go away. For San Diego, this is the very beginning of a brutal road trip. Welcome back to baseball after the All Star break. Four in St. Louis, three in Cincinnati, four in Pittsburgh. Yikes. And for a team already scuffling, that's a, a rough thing to look at when you map out your future travel plans. 2 2 to Gonzalez. He hits the hole into left field. Edgar Gonzalez has his second hit of the game as we check in again with Jeannie Zelasco in Los Angeles. And we find the Brewers trailing the Giants 4 1 going into the sixth inning, and then they got hot, including Ricky Weeks contributing a two run double. Mike Cameron, Jason Kendall score part of a four run sixth inning. And right now it's 5 4 Brewers, top six. Jeannie, thanks. The Brewers are coming hard. Just four back of Chicago. Only a game behind St. Louis in the Central. Tony La Russa hanging on for dear life after going out and getting Wellmeyer after he got a strikeout to start the inning. He was taken out after 84 pitches. Hadn't given up a hit, as you had said, and since the third inning. And the bullpen has come in. Giving up a walk and a base hit. Now the meat of the order for the Padres looking to do some damage. Ryan Giles has walked twice this afternoon. Made the great catch that retired the Cardinals without any further damage in the last of the six. Knocked himself silly against that padded wall, that vaguely padded wall in right. How's that wall out there? <laughs> hey, you note know the non response from Giles. That's beautiful. How's that wall out there? Save it there, Ump. I know you're wearing a mic, but come on, I almost killed myself out there today. <laughs> and the 2 1 pitch misses low. Three balls and a strike to Giles. Springer is in jeopardy of loading the bases here for Adrian Gonzalez. San Diego's biggest offensive threat might have a big opportunity here in the seventh. Giles fouls it back. You know I can't imagine for for Russ Springer a guy who's been out there now for 16 years at the big league level. 39 years old going back to back days especially day game after a night game has to be difficult can't be easy at all your your arm only has so many bullets in it breaking ball lined into right for a base hit that's going to load the bases Giles waited back on that nicely and indeed they're full of Padres with only one gun. Breaking ball off the end of the bat. Giles is able to loop it out there in front of Ryan Ludwig. And Tony La Russa. I know you're going to be shocked, but he's going to make a pitching change. Well, there's a reason why the Cardinals have 13 pitchers on the roster. <laughs> we could see a good 10 or 12 of them today. Well, from a 39 year old right hander to a 38 year old southpaw, Ron Vallone will inherit the bases loaded mess and he'll try to get Adrian Gonzalez with only one away. San Diego in prime position to reclaim the lead here in the seventh. And Vallone's first offering misses outside. Ron Vallone, the fourth pitcher used by the Cardinals 
this inning. And we'll probably see Ryan Franklin before the inning's over as well. But Ron Ballone's going to have to try to tackle Adrian Gonzalez. He has 72 RBIs. He is the guy the pods won up in this situation. Well, these two squared off yesterday. And in a similar situation, it was in the top of the sixth inning. Fallone turned an inning ending double play off the bat of Adrian Gonzalez. St. Louis left hander looking to turn the same trick here. Gonzalez, for his part, has hit into 17 twin killings. That's the third highest total in baseball this year. And an excuse me, swing foul ball. That one got Kevin Kuzman off on deck. Ron Malone running it in there with a purpose. It's back to back fastballs that he's absolutely cleaned Adrian Gonzalez's clock. Well, as Sandy. Diego has sputtered to score runs for most of 2008. Adrian Gonzalez has led the charge in what offense they have been able to muster. His 22 home runs lead the team, as do his 72 runs batted in, which also ranked fifth in the National League. He leads the Padres in slugging percentage, hits, runs scored. He has far and away been their most valuable player in the first half of the season. A ball and two strikes with the bases loaded. Make it two and two. Boy, and to further frustrate, you know, Ron Valone is tapping into his inner Raphael Betancourt and working rather deliberately here in a situation where there's no margin for error. This is a self-inflicted wound for St. Louis. Absolutely. They were going along just fine before the bullpen gave it up. You know, Wellmeyer was cruising, struck out the first batter of this inning and was re removed. Got him looking. What a great pitch. After a bunch of fastballs in. There's the slider start. Fastball in, chew up Gonzalez. Fastball in, chew up Gonzalez. Another fastball in. Now he's got Gonzalez thinking he's going to pitch me in. Nope, I'm going to buzz one right on the outside corner. That was a beautiful sequence right there that Malone put on a great hitter. So are you surprised now that Malone stays out there to face the right-handed hitter Kevin Kuzmanov? Well, the way... Tony's been doing it. Yeah, I am very surprised with Ryan Franklin up and loose. We told the story earlier of Kevin Kuzminoff hitting a grand slam on the first pitch he ever saw at the big league level. What makes the story more impressive and complete is when you learn who gave it up. Edinson Volquez, then a young anonymous Ranger right-hander. That's the guy that gave up the slam on the first pitch that Kuzminov ever saw. Currently having an all-star season in Cincinnati, of course. And Kuzminov's taking on the first pitch. It's a ball and no strikes. Well, what a trade that worked out for both Texas and Cincinnati. Volquez for Josh Hamilton. He was hitting balls like you in that home run contest, oh, yeah. Matt. Ball and no strikes. They count to Kevin Kuzman off bases loaded two gone. San Diego trailing by a run. Ron Valone has really been a uh, a one at bat specialist this year in that the first hitters he has faced are hitting a combined 81 cents. From then on opponents are batting 323 against the veteran Southpaw. Well, that surprised me for a guy, for a veteran. One thing these veteran lefties know is, boy, you don't just relax after you get that first out. 
You got to make equally good pitches here. Two balls and a strike to Kuzminov. This has got a chance, Matt, to go down as one of the ugliest zeros I've ever seen put on the board. But a zero nonetheless if he can get Kuzminov. You know, regardless of what happens here, it's just surprising that that Falone is being allowed to face Kuzminov. A swing and a high fly ball to center field. It's all going to work out okay. And it's become your reality, Mr. Grace. I would agree. One of the ugliest, scoreless half innings you're ever going to see. Fox Saturday Baseball is sponsored by Aquafina, the official water of Major League Baseball. By Just for Men, stay in the game with Just for Men hair color. And by Direct TV, if you call yourself a sports fan, you gotta get Direct TV. Plugging along in a one-run ball game, last of the seventh, and San Diego goes to the bullpen. Right-hander Brian Corey was acquired in May for cash considerations from the Red Sox, and he has since been sound in a middle relief and setup role for San Diego. We'll face Rick Ankeel to start things in the home seventh. Ankeel, Molina, and his Turris. Cardinals on top by a run. Rick Ankeel this afternoon has singled in a run. Home runs in each of the first two games of the series. A ball and no strikes from Brian Corey. To 2 0 oh now. I got to tell you, the guy working hardest this afternoon is the guy behind the plate. Bruce, Bruce Dreckman is absolutely lathered today. You can see on the back of his shirt, on the back of his, his uniform, it's different shades of blue. And that's because he's, you know, sweating through that shirt in different spots. I mean, he is an absolute glazed mess today. <laughs> I want nothing to do with that shirt. <laughs> You know what? He's called a great game, too. He's been very good. And Keel sends a fly ball to the opposite field for Headley. Jeannie Zelasco in Los Angeles. Hang with the Red Sox and the Angels. Vladimir Guerrero started the bottom of the seventh inning with a home run off Josh Beckett. That's Eric Ibar continuing to feast with one out. Bases loaded. The pinch hitter clears the bases with a triple. Part of a four run seventh inning for the Angels. And right now it's top eight, four, two Angels. Possible postseason preview between the Angels and Red Sox happening in Anaheim this afternoon. One gone here for Yadier Molina. On the first pitch, a chopper to third. Kuzmanov grabs it. There are two gone for Corey in the seventh. Pepsi, the official soft drink of Major League Baseball, would like to congratulate our clutch performer of the game, Albert Pujols. Three run double in the fifth. He's added an RBI single in the sixth. To learn more about Pepsi's Clutch Performer of the Month award, visit PepsiClutch.com. Two out bases empty now for his tourists. And the switch hitting shortstop takes strike one. Nothing in two. Corey just coming out, pounding the strike zone. Two quick outs. Jumps ahead 0-2 to Asturias. Well, all you young pitchers out there, let that be a lesson. Doesn't matter how hard you throw or how great a curveball you get, if you can throw strikes and work ahead in the count, you're going to be successful at every level. Well, Brian Corey made his Padre debut on Mother's Day. And in what had been a, a bullpen that was really up for grabs. Not a lot of continuity and not a lot of success. 
He has pitched well enough to keep that hold. I think our uh, very fine director Bill Webb showed us the uh, the temperature on the field to indicate that it's cooling off at 99 degrees. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, the old mercury has plummeted to 99. <laughs> it is still smoking hot. Popped him up. Slicing in foul territory for Kuzminov to retire the side at one, two, three, seven from Brewery. Welcome to the Direct TV Game Break, sponsored by Direct TV, the best way to watch sports. Here's Jeannie Zelasko. Welcome to the Direct TV Game Break, sponsored by Direct TV, the best way to watch sports. Great ball game in the Bronx Tuesday night. Giants coach Tom Coughlin on hand to watch the Yankees and the A's work overtime today. Top nine, Ryan Sweeney gets to Mariano Rivera to give Oakland the lead. Bottom nine, Wilson Betamete's first RBI in over two weeks ties it up. We're going to extra innings. Bottom 12, we find the bases loaded, one out. Lenny DiNardo's fourth pitch ends it when he makes contact with Jose Molina. Yankees win in 12. Well, some changes for St. Louis as we head to the top of the eighth. Aaron Miles takes over at second base, and that moves Brendan Ryan to shortstop in place of Cesar Asturias, who comes out on the switch for the new pitcher, right-hander Ryan Franklin takes over on the mound for St. Louis. Ryan Franklin's done some closing. He's getting the ball in the eighth inning now. Tony Larusa's run a lot of Cardinal bullpen out there already. Chase Headley leads it off for San Diego. The Padres still down to run. See Tony La Russa repositioning Brendan Ryan his new shortstop. Underway here in the eighth. Well the Cardinals have used a three headed monster to try to close ball games this year as Jason Isringhausen has faltered seven blown saves the most in Major League Baseball. Adam Wainwright's had his opportunities and Ryan Franklin has saved 11 in 13 chances. Including one here on Thursday night. What a gorgeous pitch that was. Had some teeth right on the belly button of Headley there. Watch this cut fastball just eat him up. See that score on the top right hand corner of your screen that just disappeared. It'll be back in a moment. The uh, Giants have pulled even with Milwaukee and San Francisco, a 5 5 score in the seventh. If the Giants can do the Cardinals another favor, and St. Louis hangs on here today, then the Cardinals will go to bed on this Saturday night down by just two games in the Central. That is, if Houston can do the Cardinals a favor. They're looking for help from the Giants, too, but that's behind them. And a breaking ball misses to Headley. Two balls and two strikes. That Brewer game, that was the all star starter, Ben Sheets. The 2 2. Full count now, three balls and two strikes. Boy, nothing has come easy. From anybody in that St. Louis bullpen this afternoon. Not at all. They've all been long at bats. This one started out at 0 and 2. Now it's 3 and 2. Molina says, "Heck with it. Give me the fastball." And Franklin's 3-2 pitch is fouled away again. Franklin did, in fact, earn the save on Thursday night, as we talked about a moment ago. But it did not come without some grief. Chase Headley was one of two Padres. Who doubled against him in the ninth inning on Thursday? And San Diego got to him for a run, but he was able to hang on to record his 13th save of the year. And there's ball four. Tying runs on base to start the top of the eighth. So now Khalil Green. Green doubled and scored in the second. Buddy Black actually pinch hit for Khalil Green. 
when Franklin earned that save on Thursday night a move that caught a lot of folks by surprise. You've got it the starting shortstop and a guy who's been a 90 plus RBI guy each of the last couple of years. But his struggles led to Buddy Black giving the uh, reigning PCL batting champ and triple they call up Ryan Myro a chance here Thursday. It speaks a lot about how Khalil Green is going. And Bud Black realizes that you know what? You haven't been the same offensive player this year, so I'm gonna have to try somebody else or at least give the batting champ, the PCL batting champ, give him an opportunity. 0 and 1 the counts of green here. San Diego's bullpen is busy. Clay Hensley on your left, Heath Bell on the right side of your picture. And it's 0 2. But Will Green got a good pitch to hit there. Took a nice rip at it. Came up empty. Franklin out of the stretch again. Molina sets up way off the plate on the ground to shortstop. Ryan knocked it down. They get the out on the runner at second base. There's that cold zone that uh, we talked about earlier, Gracie, on the Burger King hot zone down and away. And Green struggles at that part of the plate. Cardinals end up getting one. There you see it, low and away. He has still never had a hit. On a low and away pitch. Ever. Brian Myro will pinch hit here with one gone. The aforementioned 2007 PCL batting champ. And Myro takes a strike. Myro had a September call up last year with the big league Padres, went one for ten. He's connected on a pinch hit home run this year in limited opportunity. Well, I just love watching Molina back there. These balls in the dirt. He just gobbles them. He doesn't even block them. He comes up with them clean. Watch the great feet by Yadier Molina. Just beautifully done. Here, Molina has really evolved into something other than just being uh, Benji and Jose's kid brother. And he's turned into a terrific hitter, hitting over 300, as you said. But he's he's just got that Molina talent behind the plate. He's starting to learn his pitchers. He's starting to make them better. Think right along with him. He's out there every day. Myro hits the hole on the right side a base hit that will advance green 90 feet runners at first and second against Ryan Franklin here in the eighth. Well Benji Molina having a big year in San Francisco. He's driven in 56 runs. Jose is part of a, a catching platoon of backups to Jorge Posada of course in New York. Yadier might actually be having the best overall year of the brothers in 2008. Another pinch hitter, Luis Rodriguez, among the AAA call ups for San Diego here in July. He had a chance to try to tie the ball game in the ninth inning on Thursday. He'll try to do the same here in the eighth inning this afternoon. Now this was something that Buddy Black talked about after Thursday's series opener. You're playing the Cardinals in St. Louis. The Cardinals with all of their major marquee talent. And you're trying to tie a ball game in the ninth inning on the road with three guys who until about three weeks ago were playing at AAA. Playing in the minor league. Once again Molina beautifully just snuffing a would be wild pitch. Watch him slide over there. Nice. It's almost effortless for him. 
But you're right. And without uh, they, they just recently traded veteran Tony Clark, a guy that could give you a pinch hitter with some scary pop off the bench. Rodriguez bounces it to second. Miles to Ryan back to Pujols. The double play. In and out of trouble is Ryan Franklin in the eighth. Fox Saturday Baseball is sponsored by Prescription Flomax, by Sharp Solar, Change Your Power, Change Your Planet, and by beautiful, durable Valspar Paint. Valspar, the beauty goes on. As do the pitching changes. And the latest will also bring in a new catcher as Luke Carlin takes over behind the plate. And right-hander veteran Clay Hensley takes over on the mound. Hensley with only one appearance at the Major League level this year. He has bounced back and forth between Triple-A Portland and Major League San Diego. And a guy who was such a big part of the starting rotation in 2006, trying to rework his way back into the big league good graces in the bullpen this year. Oh, that mischievous Fred Bird. <laughs> There's no UP. Oh, my goodness. Fred Bird. Aaron Miles will lead things off in the last of the eighth inning for St. Louis. Miles Ryan in top of the order. Schumacher against Clay Hensley. Aaron Miles came on in a double switch last inning. A switch hitter making his first plate appearance today. Well, the Cardinals have sure used a lot of second basemen during Tony LaRusse's tenure. And it seems to be one of those positions that's turned over here every couple of years, and the Cardinals don't miss a beat. They, they never have. It seems like everybody they, they run out there is, you know, it's almost like they're they're from the same mold. They're all kind of spray hitters fast. Three balls and a strike to count to Aaron Miles. That's a lot of bodies since the start of the 96 season. You just saw the graphic on your screen. And a chopper to first. Good backhanded play by Gonzalez. And one away. Our sharp game changing play came on a booted ball by Kevin Kuzminov. It was actually a bad throw. As Aaron Throw opened the door to a big inning for St. Louis. And the Cardinals capitalized. The E5 led to a two run rally in the sixth, and that's how the Cardinals earned the lead. Two unearned runs. As you said, the Cardinals give them credit. They took advantage. Game-changing play brought to you by Sharp Aqua's LCD TVs, the official HD TV of Major League Baseball. <laughs> Brendan Ryan started the afternoon at second base. He moved over to shortstop in the switches last half inning. If I were to run through some of those names of Cardinals to have started at third base during the La Russa era. I think some of those second basemen would surprise you. Love to hear a few. Pat Kelly. Remember Pat Kelly? Oh, yeah. 35 starts there. Bo Hart, who everybody thought was going to be here for years and years. Joe McEwing, Super Joe Super McEwing. Super Joe McEwing. See, they're all a, cut a out of the run. same mold. Just little guys, singles hitters. I'm trying to think, is that it? Got to be some others. Well, th those are the guys that you kind of forget about. You remember, you know, Fernando Vina being here for a few years. As Ryan sends a fly ball out behind second base for Green and out number two. A reminder next week on Fox Saturday Baseball, many of you will see the Yankees and Red Sox, some the Braves and Phillies. Complete coverage begins with a pregame show at 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central, 12.30 Pacific. Check your local listings for the game and time in your area. Oh, boy, oh, boy.
this morning. I just heard Tom Brenneman. I think Tommy will be working next week. Skip Schumacher now with two gone. Schumacher without a base hit this afternoon on a night when St. Louis has scored six runs on nine hits. Last year after the All Star break is when Schumacher really came alive. He hit 369 after the break last year. Well, the Padres are going to have one last crack in this one. Clay Hensley hoping to get them there down just a run top of the ninth inning and San Diego will have the top of the order. Still the ball and two strikes to skip Schumacher. Another good crowd here this afternoon. Each of the first two games of the series sold out. The folks that built this ballpark had a good idea when they made the seats red. Because you can't tell the difference between an occupied seat and a Cardinal fan wearing the uh, requisite red t shirt. It's just such a great tradition that Cardinals fans have here. They wear their red. And do they ever show up? On a hop back to the pitcher as Hensley throws out Schumacher. One last chance for San Diego this afternoon. The Cardinals on top six to five. Well, Ryan Franklin will be allowed the opportunity to continue and try to make this a six out save. And he'll get the top of the San Diego order protecting a one run Cardinal lead San Diego trying to make it their fourth consecutive win, and they're trying to take the first three in a four game series here with San Diego Ryan Franklin trying to take a page out of Bruce Souter's book get a two inning save that is St. Louis trying to take the first three or four with San Diego Jody Garrett lines it right to Aaron Miles and there's one gone for Franklin. Today's Chevrolet player of the game is St. Louis first baseman and seven time All Star Albert Pujols. Four runs batted in, including a big bases loaded three run double in the middle of the game that brought the Cardinals back from down 5 zip. For more coverage, log on to FoxSports.com. Chevy and American Revolution. Here's Edgar Gonzalez. Talk about the Cardinals being down five zip. Edgar Gonzalez hit the three run home run in the second that made it five nothing. San Diego since then, just a handful of opportunities to score. And they've come late. Yeah, they kind of just rested on their laurels, didn't they? They, they weren't near as aggressive. And that's just that's youngsters. Just still don't have the ability to step on an opponent's neck when you got them down. Fouled into the stands, and it's a ball and two strikes to Gonzalez. Now, St. Louis on the verge of running their record to 56 and 43. Again, they'll be doing a little casual scoreboard watching tonight. Cubs are in Houston. Milwaukee underway in San Francisco. And there's a chance St. Louis can go to sleep tonight down just two games in the Central. San Diego down to its final out. What a pitch there by Franklin. Shaves the outside corner. Very defensive swing from Gonzalez. And Cardinal fans are on their feet. Forty-five thousand plus. Another sold-out crowd here at Bush. And only Brian Giles stands in the way. Breaking ball taken for a strike. 
Well, St. Louis hasn't made that big sexy move yet. Milwaukee acquiring Sabathia. The Cubs go get Harden. But put the rest of the Central Division on notice. Because the Cardinals are a major part of the race here in the second half of the season. We'll return to St. Louis for more postgame coverage right after these messages. St. Louis comes back from a 5 nothing deficit to defeat the San Diego Padres this afternoon 6 to 5 the final score is the Cardinals may get four in a row promotional consideration provided by next Saturday Fox Saturday baseball is back with regional action you'll either see the Yankees and Red Sox or some will see the Braves and Phillies coverage begins at 3:30 Eastern. Tomorrow it's auto racing action on Fox coverage of the German Grand Prix at 1 p.m. Eastern for more information on today's game and the latest in Major League Baseball news log on to Fox powered by MSN the world's favorite sports site. So for Mark Grace this is Matt Vaskersian saying so long from St. Louis the Cardinals defeat the Padres six to five this afternoon. You've been watching Fox Sports your home for the 2008 NLCS and World Series.